Good morning. I'm standing here in one of the streets of Cairo, Illinois. And uh, we are inspecting and visiting one of the sites of uh, these uh, sand boils that have popped up in the last uh, couple of weeks as a result of the, uh, the flood that is currently ongoing here uh, in southern Illinois and northern Tennessee in the location or in the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. There is some reason to believe that this river, this underground stream is going in this direction. As you can see, it has kind of um, um, loosened uh, the soil in here. My name is George Pomroy. I work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Memphis District. We're on site here at a, a sand ball that is undermining the street. And uh, it's pretty clear there that uh, it's in various locations under here, under the, uh, towards the house, and just about everywhere out here in the middle of the street, there's a possibility of sand balls. How many of these sand boils have you had in the last couple of weeks here in Cairo? Oh, somewhere in the neighborhood, maybe 25, somewhere close to it. Smaller balls, a lot, lot smaller than this. We don't even ring them, but we monitor them, we watch them. If they get larger, then we put sandbags around them. How do you intend to fix these boils after the flood is over? Oh, this will all be dug out. They'll come in here and they may uh, put in a rip wrap to try to stabilize the bottom. Uh, it's hard to say what, uh, what we may encounter. We don't know yet until we get all this excavated out. And uh, it'll be all the way curb to curb and probably back up in this uh, lot behind you. And uh, they have put down sheet piling in places to help try to stabilize the bank. the 5th of May, maybe a little bit later. I'm not real sure the exact date. How wide is the Ohio here? Well, right now it's probably around uh, 3,500 to 4,000 feet. That's from the wall there back over to the uh, uh, embankment back in the trees over there. Lewis and Clark started their expedition at this point right here. This is where their campsite was at back in 1803, before their journey up to Mississippi. So this is where it all began, right here. This is the area right here where the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers were back in the 1860s, and possibly even during uh, Lewis and Clark's time. And uh, back, uh, back during, 18, uh, during the Civil War in the 1860s, Grant came in here and captured Carroll for the uh, Union and there was no battle fought here but they uh, built a fort right behind us which is over here where the uh, sewage uh, treatment plants located at. They found a uh, breastworks there when they dug out the foundations for the buildings over here and they had uh, found uh, cannonballs still stacked they found some uh, rifle parts, swords, and uh, 
other material that they had during the uh, uh, Civil War times. Fort Defiance is located right here where the sewage treatment facility is located at. That's the buildings over on the inside. And here we have the uh, earth levees which go all the way up the uh, Mississippi River on the Illinois side here and uh, connect with other levees coming down. And uh, this is for the uh, new wall here that they uh, incorporated the old wall in, inside in this particular location. Down there in that group of trees, straight down below us down here, and then this backwater here. This is all from the Mississippi River. Down there in those trees down there is the uh, confluence of the Ohio and the Mississippi. It's uh, not available at this present time. There's no way to get to it. But uh, that's where the two rivers come together. And the Ohio ends there, and the Mississippi continues on south to New Orleans. Over here on the left hand side here, we're standing on an earthen levee. Uh, this helped protect Carroll there during this previous flood and in the past floods. And uh, over here on the left is the Mississippi River. Back over here on the other side, these trees, small trees, and that is the uh, community of Carroll. And it got within 3.3 feet of uh, overtopping the levee. Tom Morgan. I'm with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We're out of Memphis. I'm the area commander for the Cairo area during the flood fight. Uh, basically what we got here is a sand bowl that's underneath the street. You can see it all along the joints in the street. Uh, you can see it kind of bubbling up and you can see some movement of material from underneath the, the road bed here. Uh, this whole section was bubbling up at one time at its peak and it's, it's starting to settle down now but uh, eventually enough material will come out from the, underneath the street it'll have to be uh, repaired and you can see it already sinking down bubbling over there we tried to uh, sandbag this area to some degree to try to get water and it was successful to get water over the uh, the boils at the time and it did subside but it seemed to push uh, the the pressure out out away from the initial point up there. This is a. Uh, a very large sand bowl that we're looking at right here. Uh, we, we estimate it to be a two, a, could be up to 24 inches in diameter throat. And it developed uh, uh, when the river stage was about 59 feet on the Cairo gauge. Uh, we figured at that time there was about a 20 foot head, at least a 20 foot head over this area. Uh, what we've done is try to ring the bowl and we put approximately uh, 10 to 12 feet of water over the top of this sand bowl so that we minimize or that we reduce the head uh, over the sand bowl. Therefore, what we're looking to do is stop the uh, flow of material, the piping of material from under there, uh, from, from the sand bowl. Uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, we're still, Letting the water flow, let it flow clear, it reduces some of the pressure, but we're trying to minimize how much material that is piping from under the ground. Uh, we, we think we have it under control now, it's dropped about two feet. Uh, we continue to lower our sandbags here so that we continue to get flow so that we don't risk uh, this, uh, this from popping up somewhere else. This is uh, Bird's Point, the Madrid Floodway. The breach area is back over near the, uh, to the right of the uh, smokestack, which you see over in Kentucky. Where the trees are at, that's where they blew the levee. 
the levee breach is at a place that they call Bird's Point. Uh, over there, about a couple miles from here, and you can almost see the breach over there to the left of the trees in the middle of the floodplain. This is the Bird's Point floodway for North Madrid floodway here in Missouri. This breach was operated or uh, put into action to relieve floodwaters from the Mississippi on or around May 5th. We are, today is Wednesday, May 18th, 2011.